welcome to the Believe Fantasy Football Show. Lindsay and Fabs reunited back together. I'm fully refreshed after a week of spring break. I did not look directly at the sun yesterday for the eclipse. How'd you what'd you think of that, Fabs? You were you're in Florida. I don't think you're on the path of totality. Oh, I, I, I hate that word. I'm so I don't want to hear that word no? for another 21 years because like that that's the next one. I don't want I hate that word. I don't know. It drives me nuts. There's certain words in the English vocabulary that make me nuts. And totality is now one of those words. Another one is moist. I hate uh, that I word. knew I you were going to say that. I was <laughs> thinking about whether I, I was going to suggest that. I hate it. Okay. But anyways, uh, totality. We, we got to see like huh. a 47% eclipse. Okay. And I had the glasses on. And, and so it was like pretty neat, but it wasn't anything like you experienced. Like Bob Harris, um, he saw the whole thing where it was a complete solar eclipse and it went dark and it got colder and stuff that apparently is going to be what happens in 21 years when I will be 70, uh, one, holy crap. Um, and that one is going to go right through South Florida. So I'll see okay. the whole deal. Here's, I'm not saying the T word. Here's my that's, question. That's a, long time from that's now. a funny yeah. word to be triggered by, by the way. Um, I don't like it. I don't know because like I kept hearing it on, like I was on like watching TV and it was like, we're in the totality. We're in the totality. We're in the totality. I'm like, Sh shut up with the damn totality. I'm done with it. So I don't want to, I'm, I'm okay. I'm good. You know, I'm going to say that word like eight times in this That's episode fine. now that you've, they hate it. Yeah. you've um, yeah. laid that gauntlet down. Uh, here's the thing that I'm confused about. And maybe this is just makes me stupid, but they kept talking about how it was a once in a lifetime thing. And then they were like, it happened 20 years ago and it's going to happen in 20 years. And I was like, that specifically makes it not a once in a lifetime thing unless your lifetime's incredibly short. Like what's happening here with this description? It's like if you're a dog, it's maybe a <laughs> once in a lifetime. I don't know, thing. man. I don't know. It's, it's, the, I, and I, and I gotta be honest with you and yeah. you know, maybe, maybe I'm just a, a jerk, but like you're really crying over an eclipse. Oh, that does like, make you a jerk. Yes. Who cares? What well, you some people it? care. Some people uh, have a different connection to science and space, and there are different things. I don't know, man. Don't be a hater. Listen, when the Cowboys won the Super Bowls, I didn't cry. Trust me, I was into it. I didn't cry. When the Yankees won the World Series, I didn't cry. But you understand that I'm some happy. people did, and you get it, right? You're not like, why are you crying? I don't know. It's a, I, I, whatever. I don't know. I, I'm not an emotional like person like that. Like, I see people at, I, I'll throw out Taylor Swift, like oh at a Taylor Swift concert. I get it. And they I cry get and they I get faint that. and they go nuts. Not and I'm fainting, like, why? But... It's just a human being. I like, know, stop. but it's, it's a lot of emotion that they have attached to certain things in their life. And now it's playing out in a different way. The moment means something different than just an eclipse. The moment means something different than just watching a concert. It's emotions that are connected to it for different yeah. people. Same as same as if the Cowboys won a Super Bowl and win different teams win a Super Bowl, people think no, no. about people think about watching the game with their dad growing up and all that it means and what it would mean for the person who's now passed to have seen this happen with them. It's like it always means something more than just my team won a game like that's not you know what the crying means yeah i just uh, i i i know i don't care Back I, it, it, it's like it's cool but like there ain't nothing to cry about you know oh, i don't know why God. you gotta get blubbery over you might need uh, to go to some therapy and just get a little bit more oh, there's, there's no question about get that. a little bit more comfortable you know feeling your feelings yeah there's no question about that so fabs back to the eclipse for a second um, I was telling my kids, had done like no research prior to yesterday, but they knew it was happening. And so I was like, turned on the news. And so they knew kind of roughly what the eclipse was. And then I was like, well, you're going to go to school and they're going to, they're going to show you and you'll get to see it. And what a cool thing you'll get to see. Like, it's a perfect teaching moment, like live in action. And then I got to school and I found out that they put them on a rainy day schedule and kept them inside and specifically wouldn't let them go outside. For the eclipse. And why? Because they didn't want them to look up like without glasses or something? Yes. Because they can't legally like if somebody gets a retina damage or something like that from looking up like an idiot without the glasses on, then they didn't want like the I mean, I'm assuming, right? This is I'm I'm reading into why this is now what they do. Like someone must have like legally threatened something at some point along the line when someone's retinas were damaged from looking at the sun. And so now none of the kids got to go outside. I was dying. I was like, you've got to be kidding. But 
anyway. It seems like they should have sent home like a note that needed to be signed by parents yeah. and said, hey, my hey, kids allowed. Right. Right. You're right. Yeah. Exactly. We're yeah. going to provide the glasses that, you know, they're giving out for free at the library. And because this is school, this is a great place to learn about this. It's a perfect example of science. And right. I did see oh. something online. And again, I, I don't believe everything or almost believe. anything I read online yeah. about like how right after the eclipse occurred, like the most searched for terms were eye damage due to looking at the eclipse <laughs> or something like that. Nope. Not in my school district. I, <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Anyways. I, listen, I mean, listen, it's cool. I mean, I don't, you know, I mean, it's cool. You are the I, ultimate I in every aspect of your life. Get off my lawn personality. Like no, you just are really, leaning I, into it in every possible way. I thought it was, no, I think it's cool. But like, to me, it was just like, man, do you remember there was an eclipse when we were at NFL network and everyone was up at the top of the building at the, at the Culver city, the old Culver city. I probably location. did not leave my desk to go to the top of the building because that was me. Right. I'd be like, duh, 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 I'm typing, I'm typing. Stop talking we to me. I've got a lot there. to do. Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember <laughs> what year it was, but there was. There was some kind of eclipse going on and we all went up. I went up, I remember going up there with a uh, Mossy, Todd Mossberg, who's a, uh, <laughs> Still a producer there at NFL. And you, but, did you enjoy that once in a lifetime opportunity? I'm just kidding. But what, yeah, no, it's not once in a lifetime because now I've done it a few times. Yep. You know what's even crazier to me is the earthquakes in New York while we were gone. That's true. That, that like, you know, you got the earthquakes in New York and then you got the eclipse. You got the locust and the cicadas are coming. Okay. Like I'm waiting for the four horsemen. I, I mean, geez Louise, what's well, going on? Did Nostradamus predict this someplace or what? More importantly... While we were not together, Stefan Diggs was traded. <laughs> yeah, well, all right. Yeah, now we're getting into football. Yes. Ooh, I got that notification. Um, uh, well, you know, uh, and so I'm I'm on vacation. I'm not checking my phone with a great deal of frequency. I'm trying to like actually, you know, log out and not be on Twitter all day long. And so by the time I saw that, the first tweet that I saw said something about like the Dolphins have no excuse not to win the AFC East now and it was tied to a Stefan Diggs and I just I put the right, two together yeah. and I went the Dolphins traded for Stefan Diggs and in my head yeah. I was like trying to figure out what that would possibly look like and then I kept scrolling and it took me a minute to actually piece like the Dolphins out of my head and see Texans and I was like that right. although they also have two very good wide receivers prior to trading for Stefan Diggs it makes a lot more sense to me Yep. But um, yeah, I know you guys discussed the fantasy fallout from that last week on the show. I what I'm not sure what I, I make of that for Stefan Diggs. I think that's the most confusing thing. It's it makes it a lot easier for the discussion we're going to have today, which is AFC draft needs um, from a fantasy standpoint. What we'd like to see teams in the AFC do for Buffalo. I mean, there is just a like go ahead and circle it in red and then highlight it. It's like it's wide receiver all the way for me there. We'll get to that in just a second. But first, uh, from from a Stefan Diggs standpoint, there's clearly fantasy fallout for him because we don't know where he fits into that wide receiver room. He's going to receive less targets, clearly, with Nico and with Tank Dell there. I don't know. Is, is he still a one? Is he a two? It doesn't really matter. I kind of feel like they're all going to get the ball. Um, and so I'm not, I'm not totally sure. I'm not totally sure if I don't just downgrade all of them just a, just a hair. But, yeah, uh, but I think I, you have to. Yeah, I think you have to. And... You know, you think you think of Stephon Diggs and a guy who's averaged like 160 targets in his last what four or five years. That's not going to happen unless somebody gets hurt. Yeah, and it's a big win for C.J. Stroud. It stinks for just about everybody else uh, in Houston. It's not good. I I don't think Nico's a. I have not updated my rankings because I'm waiting until the draft is over. Yeah. Because I, I, honestly, like it's it's an exercise in futility as a fantasy analyst to update rankings anytime before the draft because it's all just going to get blown up. And so in my, in my mind's eye, in my mind's fantasy eye, Stefan Diggs is probably a low two. Nico's probably a two. Dell's probably a high three uh, at best. And I, I mean, think about it. Like how often, Lindsay, do you see three wide receivers on the yeah. same team mm -hmm. put up top 24 or 30 fantasy numbers? Now, I believe, I want to say that the Carolina Panthers did that a few years ago with DJ Moore, Robbie Anderson and Curtis Samuel. Uh, but none of the three were like Ooh. overly consistent. Uh -huh. And then you could go way back to like the Colts days when they had Marvin Harrison, Reggie Wayne and Brandon Stokely. But I mean, that was Peyton Manning. So I, I, I 
Diggs to me takes the biggest hit and we were already a little bit worried about Diggs because of what he didn't do in the second half when Joe Brady took over as the offensive coordinator. But for now, I, I say Nico's a high two. I think Diggs is a mid to low two and Tank's probably a high three, maybe a low two uh, in the flex starter conversation. Uh, no doubt about that. But they've also got Dalton Schultz. You've also got Joe Mixon who can catch 40 balls out of the backfield. Uh, CJ Stroud right now, if he doesn't finish as a top five fantasy quarterback, a lot of folks are going to be very surprised, or at least in that general range. Yeah, it feels like to me, it's there's a lot of guesswork, like you're saying, with regard to the three wide receivers, because it's going to depend on how they employ them, like what routes they have each one of them running, and then how the defenses approach them. Like who gets the number one corner, you know, uh, more frequently, is it Nico? Like, we don't know the answer to that just yet. And so, uh, I think I agree with your assessment that they all just kind of like go down a teeny bit. Um, yeah. Uh, so fabs, like I said, we're going to talk about AFC draft needs today. We're going to go through every team in the AFC. We're going to do it relatively quickly because, um, here we are several, what, Can you 10 and minutes into the show and have it really quickly when it comes to, we're going to try, we're going to try. Uh, first <laughs> though, before we get to that, I want to remind you that bet online is your number one source for all your summer sports this season from MLB golf, NBA, NHL playoffs, uh, all of the stats, all the latest stats, news scores available to follow your favorite teams. You can get the latest odds and lines, including the latest team matchups, player props, and odds in just about every sport out there. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to get in on the action bet online where the game starts. Now let's get to the bulk of what we want to talk about today, which is the AFC draft needs. We can start in the AFC East and go team by team here. Uh, let's and this is only fantasy. We're not talking defense. Uh, it's right. only it's only offense. At least, like I'm posting stuff right now online. I'm only going offense okay. because defense. Yeah, if we do defense, we'll be here all day. Uh, so we don't want to do that. You don't want to tell me that they need a cornerback or something like that. Uh, some of no, these no. teams are clearly, and I'll try to win. It's obvious. Say like they're probably going to do this here, but from a fantasy standpoint, this is what we would like an improvement uh, or an upgrade. Mm -hmm. Uh, more than yep. the other things. Let's start with the Bills and uh, the team that has had the most success in this division in the last few years. And I think the one with the most glaring need now that Stefan Diggs is gone. Although, frankly, I thought this is the direction that they should go in even when they had Stefan Diggs. So now they move Stefan Diggs and they have like no one. They don't have one or a two at wide receiver. And so they better invest some draft capital into that position. Let me, before I give you the team needs, let me throw something out that I would love to see happen and maybe it will and maybe it won't. Ooh. I would love to see the Bills go after T. Higgins, try to trade for him and send a draft pick over to Cincinnati because ultimately you're not going to be able to keep Burrow, Jamar Chase and Higgins long term. Right. They're probably going to keep Jamar and Burrow. So um, do that. That would be awesome in fantasy and it would, it, it would, it would make the wide receiver position um, it, it would help the wide receiver position a bit because now we have, instead of a one in Buffalo, a one in Houston and a two in Houston, now we have two twos in Houston and a three. Let's get T Higgins to Buffalo. I would love to see that happen, yeah. but yeah, you're right. Obviously wide receiver is a need. Uh, they could go after, uh, you know, Brian Thomas, if he's still available at 27, um, you know, Adonai Mitchell could be there at 27 out of Texas, uh, lad McConkey. They're 28. They're 28. Okay, um, so I thought they were 27. My bad. Wide receiver and running back are the two offensive needs. And it's not like they need a starter at running back. They need depth behind James Cook. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I'm just desperate for them to draft a wide receiver. And frankly, I don't even think that, I don't know. I don't know that they just sit at 28 and wait. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe they can afford to do that. I just think that they need they need a wide receiver that is a a home run. Uh, like I said, I I wanted them to draft a wide receiver at twenty eight when they had Stefan Diggs. So now that they don't, I mean, if they if they make a move for T Higgins, then potentially that that changes things and gives them a little right. bit more flexibility. But also, what do they have to give up in terms of their that draft capital awesome. to get to that would be that that would be so awesome if they if they got Higgins, I would be so thrilled. But we will say this, and I talked about this last week. This is where fantasy and reality is completely different in, in the draft because Roma Dunze, for example, is far more highly touted than any one of the three wide receivers I just mentioned as possibilities for Buffalo. 
but I guarantee you whoever ends up in Buffalo is going to get drafted higher than Roma Dunze if he ends up in Chicago because he'll be the third guy there at best. So now that's the perfect example of, well, yeah, talent's great. Opportunity sometimes is more, more important from a fantasy perspective. Absolutely. Uh, let's talk about the Miami Dolphins now and a team that already has very good wide receivers in fantasy and in real world. Uh, they don't really use a tight end so much in the passing game. That's not really, I, I don't, I don't know that I want them to draft a tight end because well, I don't they, know that well, we're going to use that anyway. Right, they got Johnny Smith, so, but whatever. Uh, yeah. I'm, yeah. And then at running back, I mean, they already have Achan and they have, I mean, I guess what I'm getting they, at here is I don't, they, I don't they, see they, a lot of glaring needs from a fantasy standpoint. Like they're the already, thing, our cup run yeah. is over here. So I, I you, think personally, I think O-line uh, just to protect yes. all of these things. And I think that that has a trickle down effect for us in fantasy. That, that's the only thing and from an offensive standpoint that I think they could use like Braxton Berrios is their third wide receiver. I mean, could they maybe upgrade there? Okay. Cedric Wilson obviously went to new Orleans, but yeah, I mean, Teron Armstead is not like super durable, so they could use some, some uh, depth on offensive line, but yeah, you hit it right on the head. They extended Raheem Mostert. So I think you're, you're right uh, with that. No needs there uh, that are glaring from a fantasy perspective. Pivot to a team now that has tons of needs, and that's the Jets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I mean, it could- uh, but, but, do, but do they? But do they? Mm. Like, think about it. Think about it. Okay. They don't need a quarterback. <laughs> don't, they don't do they? Running. Time out. Do they? Because well, they got Tyrod. They got Tyrod, right? I mean, he's a backup. I mean, Rodgers, as a backup, so but also how long do you have Aaron Rodgers? I realize that you're not going to use their first round draft pick on a quarterback to plan for the post Aaron Rodgers thing, but I I'm not saying that that's a bad move. They're not going to do it because they have Aaron Rodgers for a reason. Like they're just going to go, just go and try to get something done and hope that all the tape sticks. Right. Um, there isn't depth to, to push them over the finish line. If he, um, bows out early again this year or at yeah, all, so but you, Right. You, I mean, you add Mike Williams, you have Garrett Wilson. Who's also going to get hurt, potentially. Alan Lazard, right. I mean, yeah, another not durable And do guy. we have Alan Lazard? Is that is that going to work? Is that going to work? Well, I, I mean, still, he's on the roster right now. I know. I mean, I'm just saying. I mean, that they have uh, 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 Xavier Gibson, too. But I think that the, the one need would be tight end. And you see a lot of mock drafts where they're getting Brock Bowers. Right, right now they have Tyler Conklin, who's, you know, he's, he's okay, but he's not Brock Bowers. Yeah. And so that would be the... That would be the the only need I see for the Jets offensively going into this upcoming season. Here's my here's my question there. And I don't know. Aaron Rodgers doesn't have a history of really utilizing rookies in his offense. Like he, you know, isn't necessarily somebody who's like right out of the gate. You know what I trust? I trust that rookie. Right. So there there is some history there. Do you think that it would be different with Brock Bowers? Would we feel really confident if Brock Bowers went there? We're like, that's the spot. We're getting the most that we want out of him from a fantasy standpoint. I'm no. not totally sure that I actually I like that landing spot. Selfishly, in terms of somebody who really wants Brock Bowers to do what Sam Laporta did last season, be able to utilize right. him out of the gate in fantasy, I'm not sure that the Jets is where I would place him, which is not to say that not, they don't want him, but I'm just saying I don't know that I love that spot. Selfishly, I'd rather see Bowers go to like the Chargers, but I mean, you know, that's that's not going to happen. Because they have such a need and there's so much potential volume in terms of targets there. If they started there's building the, out their pass catchers with the tight end and they were like, that's it, that's all we need. I don't know if I could handle The, the that. thing is, I think the Jets are going to look at at him if he's available and think best player on the board. Yeah. Another weapon for Rodgers. Let's get him Let's get him everything we can because he's 40 years old. And, um, but yeah, I, 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 I mean, hell, the Giants, like they, they could use Brock Bowers, right? Darren Waller. He's on the roster, but who knows how long he's going to be in the league for crying out loud. But know, telling Vic Tafer that he's not sure yet if he wants right. to retire or even continue playing. So but the Giants need a wide receiver bad. So the Giants need a quarterback. Need everything. That's too. Thursday. That's so Thursday. Now we're getting into the right. NFC. We're, you yeah, you yeah. said so, you said we so, need to go quickly. I know so. because I have a big mouth like you. I'm stupid. All right, let's go to the Patriots then. Okay, wait, but first of all, let me back up to Jets and just say really quickly. I think what they probably more likely do is go O line. Like after especially what happened last year. Like just protect him protect Aaron Rodgers, get the best offensive line that you possibly can and let him distribute the ball to the players who might not be the best players in the AFC, but you know that he can get the ball to them accurately. So take advantage of his skill set, but protect that investment because well, you're nothing I mean, if you lose Aaron Rodgers. What have they done already? 
They got Morgan Moses from Baltimore. They signed Tyron uh, uh, Smith for my beloveds. Uh, they got John Simpson from Baltimore. So they've already kind of addressed the offensive line. You think they're now good at tackle? Tyron. What's that? You think they're good at tackle? Uh, I mean, Tyron's not the most durable guy. You know, he hasn't been the most durable guy over the last few years of his career. But I, I don't know. I, I mean, Joe Alt, that he's going to be, you know, he's going to be the guy that everyone's going to be looking for. I know. Uh, our pal James Roday is praying that he ends up in, in Tennessee. Yeah. I don't think he's going to be there at 10. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I just, you know, want to name check that. I think probably O-line is the direction that I would go in for the Jets and specifically tackle. Uh, but Brock Bowers would probably be next on that list. New England. <laughs> yeah. I know. Like, where does the, the only need they don't have yeah. is running back and tight end. Right. Right. They have Ramondre and they signed Gibson. They have Hunter Henry, you know, and he's fine. Uh, they lost Janu, you know, who cares, right? I, or, or, or no, I'm sorry. They lost uh, uh, Gasicki. Yeah. Uh, who cares about him? He's in Cincinnati. So it's quarterback, mm-hmm. wide receiver, and offensive line. Yeah. They, most most of the draft pundits out there have them taking either Caleb uh, uh, or uh, Jaden Daniels or uh, Drake May. Mm-hmm. I'm getting my running back. I almost called him Caleb May. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're real different. So it would be one of those two quarterbacks mm-hmm. at three, unless they trade back. The, so, if they trade back, I'll lose my mind. Like, they just don't. Just don't. I don't. I don't like that conversation. Even I understand all of the logic behind it, but like, they need a quarterback. Are you going to get a quarterback do. next year? Is the class much better? Like, you're sitting at three. You've got access to one of these guys. Um, I, I think. Play. I think. I think Dan. I think Jaden Daniel goes too. I think he makes so much more to sense Washington. to Washington with Kingsbury. Okay. Like just from a fit standpoint, that makes so much more sense to me than Drake may. Um, I listened to a podcast last week. This is the only thing that I actually did from a work standpoint while I was on vacation was I listened to uh, JT O'Sullivan was on crap. I'm going to mess up the name of the podcast. Uh, the, 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 it's like bootleg football. Um, and these three guys had a really interesting conversation. JT O'Sullivan, his opinion is one that I value very highly uh, about quarterback evaluation. And he raised some concerns about Drake May that I think are really, really valid. So, um, I, but I think Merrill Hodge said something about that too. Merrill Hodge is just crapping on like all the top quarterbacks, maybe just to get a little, uh, publicity. Yeah. But uh, historically, if you look at the trend, you're going to have, four first round quarterbacks, right? I I don't think, I, don't, I mean, somebody could, could, you know, get nuts and, and take Knicks as well. But if, you know, for including Penix in there, mm-hmm. at, I, at least one or two of those guys is going to, is going to dud. Like it just historically, that's just what's going to happen. So is it going to be Drake? You know, is it going to be Drake may? I mean, I don't know, but um, I, I love Jaden Daniels from a fantasy perspective because of his ability to run with the football. Now Drake may could do that too. Ultimately, whoever the Patriots draft is going to have some late round fantasy value. If if they end up not going quarterback, which I would be surprised if they didn't, you know, Marvin Harrison Jr. could be there. They have a needed wide receiver. You know, they added KJ Osborne. You know, they brought back Kendrick Bourne, but no, okay, you know, Juju's still there. I think the most valuable wide receiver probably right now there is Demario Douglas, but you know, that's about it. And um, uh, you know, they also have again some needs at offensive line, so the Patriots have some work to do. Most of the value on that team is going to be out of that backfield and Ramondre Stevenson from a fantasy perspective uh, and potentially if they draft uh, Jaden Daniels if he's still on the board at three. Uh, it was driving me crazy, so I just needed to double check it because I actually highly recommend it to anybody listening. Uh, if you're interested in the quarterback conversation going into the draft and evaluating each one, which one you think you're, you know, you want your team to get or whatever, I think that this conversation was really, really good. Um, and it was, it's bootleg football. That's the name of the podcast with Brett Coleman and EJ Snyder. And they had JTO Sullivan on it last week. 3.30 is the day that they posted the links. So go listen to that. I think that you will not regret that. But yeah, New England needs a ton of things on on offense. And I agree with your assessment there. Uh, AFC North. Let's go to the AFC North now. And let's start with Baltimore and a team that had some success last year. Kind of got a little raided this offseason. Um, so I'm not sure how much carryover there is in terms like I mean I'm talking about coaches Mike McDonald is gone you've got some front office they guys starting guards yeah so so this is they they're dealing with more turnover 
um, this season than I think is the norm for them. That said, yeah. uh, I, I, I don't know if this is where everyone's going to start. I think most people are kind of going like edge rusher or cornerback. And again, uh, we're not going to discuss those positions here on this particular show. Uh, from an offensive standpoint, I would really like to see them add to their wide receiver room. And I know we say this yeah. every year and every year they do, but they haven't had a lot of success with those guys necessarily hit probably because they're picking late in the first round and they're getting specific guys as opposed to the guy who just can take over a game. I don't know that they've yep. really been able to draft one of those guys in the last few years. And so wide receiver again, let's take another swing. Right. So yeah, I wide receiver, interior offensive line, offensive tackle, you know, Simpson, Zeitler, uh, Moses all gone off the offensive line. My guess is that in the first round, they will draft an offensive lineman. Uh, I could see them going with a wide receiver though. Uh, at some point in, you know, round two or three, maybe you, know, you take a shot on a Ricky Pearsall or a Roman Wilson out of Michigan or, uh, a Jalen Polk out of uh, out of Washington, uh, because r- listen, Rashad Bateman just has not panned out as a first round wide receiver. He just hasn't. Uh, Zay Flowers was very good last season. They have two very good tight ends, and now they have Derrick Henry. Which, by the way, still pissed off at that report that Derrick Henry came out and said Cowboys never even reached out to me. Stupid freaking Jerry Jones jackass. Uh, anyways, um, yeah. So wide receiver and offensive line are the two needs in Baltimore. Uh, I, I almost swore. I almost threw an F bomb and I, 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 Oh, okay. Well, I'm so glad you didn't. I'm so, my ears, you're, you're, you're <laughs> your virgin ears, Rhodes. I don't want to, you know, you know, what's a story from my daughter's drop off this morning. She's in first grade. And so I'm standing, she, the F-bomb, did she? she did not No, this, okay, this wasn't okay. the segue. That wasn't the segue for this. Right, it was okay. Ravens in general. So I'm sitting there in this cute little six-year-old boy, right? Comes up to one of the other boys while we're standing in line and goes, the Texans are going to be on fire next year. And I'm like, oh, what's this conversation? So I'm like, just like listening to them do their evaluation about how the Texans are going to be so good because they have Stefan Diggs. And and then the other kid goes, yeah, the Ravens too. They got Derrick Henry. And I'm like, "Mm, we might need to have a conversation about what that means for the team. But anyway, he was not devaluing the running back position. I thought it was funny that the Ravens or the team coming out of free agency that he was the most excited about because Derrick Henry went there. Anyway, so that's Baltimore, uh, what we would like them to do from a fantasy standpoint. Uh, what about Cincinnati? They're, they're a team that doesn't have a lot of needs either. I could see them, again, I, with T. Higgins, yep. I, I would love to see some sort of trade to Buffalo. But you could say that they could you know, grab a wide receiver at some point in the draft. It won't be... Per- something that is is uh, you know uh, high on their list, but among their picks, I think they could potentially go wide receiver. And honestly, I mean, like offensive line, right? I mean, they 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 brought in Trent Brown, they lost Jonah Williams, uh, who went to Arizona, and you know we want to protect Joe Burrow uh, and and block for Zach Moss. So I think the offensive line is probably the biggest um, the biggest need in Cincinnati on the offensive side. But again, I mean, there, there's a chance they could go after uh, you know a wide receiver at some point in the draft. Yeah, I mean, you know, teams that don't have glaring holes, I think sometimes you want to just plan for the future and give yourself some maneuverability and plan right, for yeah. the future without T. So I don't I don't hate that move. Either they're sitting at 18, and I think both of those tackle or wide receiver would be good picks. Um, don't need a tight end because they just signed Mike Gesicki. So, yeah, yeah. I, I think I agree with you. The Browns, <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know, man. Have not, yeah. I don't see any except for offensive line, Linz. That That's all I see. Yeah. I mean, at, well, so they've got six running backs on their roster right now. Um, I mean, we don't know how healthy Nick Chubb is going to be coming out of the game, but they've got Jerome Ford. I mean, they've got they've got depth at that position. So that's not something. I yeah. mean, we don't want – Yeah, they we added don't, Foreman. They added Hines. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they're good. And they only have five draft picks. Oh, my gosh. I did not know that. Well, that Sean makes Walton. sense, though, because they traded all of them to Houston. Right. For the rest so of the they, time. So they, 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 and they now they, for, what they really need is a quarterback, but that's a separate conversation. They, they, well, hey, they, they they're not going to. And, and, and Watson there. Poo ya. Um, you know, they, they traded for, for Jerry Judy. Mm-hmm. Obviously, Nijoku, you know, maybe you, 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 I think they're good at tight end. I really, the offensive line, you know, maybe an offensive tackle. Like that's the only thing the Browns really need from a fantasy perspective. And uh, they don't have a lot of picks. So. Yeah, I don't love their wide receiver room. Like, this is not a room where I'm like, you know what? They've got a great. I'm gonna I'm, if I'm ranking wide receiver rooms, they're not one that I'm really considering in in the top. But <clears throat> the fact that they 
made the move for Jerry Judy, it, I would then be surprised if they also used draft capital to fill that spot, right? They've got Elijah Moore. They have Amari. We love Amari. Uh, I'm not mm -hmm. sure how I feel about Jerry Judy. I'm not sure how I feel about Elijah Moore. But the fact that they went out and got Elijah uh, Jerry Judy and you know used some of their resources to do that tells me that that's probably not a direction that they're going to go in. So mm -hmm. I agree with you there. Steelers, uh, this one to me, I think they're probably more likely on the offensive side uh, to go O-line here. Um, mm -hmm. I think like cornerback is also a possibility on the defensive side. What I would like to see them do is get a wide receiver. I'm not sure if this is something that they will do, but right now they've got Pickens as a one. I don't necessarily, I've, I've told you, I don't necessarily love him as a one. I really, I like him as a two, but he's not my favorite one. And then after that, they've got Van Jefferson and Quez Watkins as their starting wide receiver. So this is not a room I'm particularly fired up about, and I would like to see them upgrade the wide receiver position. And I think they will probably in round two or three. I, I think in round one, you're right on it. You know, they want to continue to build that offensive line, uh, which they've been doing through the draft in the last couple of years. Uh, they, they're at 51 in round two. So, you know, Xavier Worthy could be there. Um, Keon Coleman could be there out of Florida State. Uh, Xavier Leggett could be there out of South Carolina. Again, like we don't know how highly, you know, these GMs really value wide receivers. Like we've seen wide receivers go way higher than we thought. And then I, we've seen wide receivers go way lower than we thought, like DK Metcalf from a, you know a few years ago. So, um, but I think wide receiver will be uh, focused because, as you mentioned, I mean they got Van Jefferson, you know they got Calvin Austin. Like there's just not a lot to like. I will say this, and Lindsey knows this: the Steelers are going to run a lot of two tight end sets, <laughs> right? I mean, like with Arthur Smith. Uh, so wide receiver is not going to be a a prominently targeted position overall. Like you're not going to see a superstar. I, and I know that you have your, you know, your issues uh, with Pickens and I don't blame you, but he's in a position where he should lead that team in targets. But regardless, uh, this is going to be a, a different offense now under Arthur Smith. Uh, but the offensive skill positions, the only thing I see is wide receiver. They're good at tight end. They've Obviously, got they, five they tight have ends. Two, two brand new quarterbacks, you know, uh, battling for the job. Yeah. <laughs> Running back, they're set. So wide receiver after trading Deontay away and Kyle Allen. And then they signed Kyle Allen last week is so they're their third quarterback. And just stylistically, I, I thought it because you've got Russell and then you've got Justin Fields and you've got Kyle Allen. <laughs> like It's like, it doesn't, it doesn't fit, but All anyway. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. So who is next after the Steelers? So that, that uh, we have now done the whole, the entire AFC got, North. AFC South. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's start with the team that we talked about uh, that traded for Stefan Diggs and frankly has gone in one year's time from a team that was picking at the top of the draft a few times because they were so bad to being a team that I don't think they need anything. Like the Texans are completely, in my opinion, the only just taking best available. They've positioned themselves as that team. Like I don't see a hole. And I certainly, from a fantasy standpoint, looking at the offensive pieces, I don't see anything. I don't see anything I want them to do there. The only thing that they could do is add some depth to the offensive line on the offensive side of the ball. That's it. I, they don't have a first round pick, uh, but they do have, I believe, eight or nine picks overall. And I, listen, man, it's just it's just adding to the depth uh, on both sides of the football, on the offensive side, on the defensive side. And boy, I... I if I don't, I don't know how many Texans fans there are out there, but I guarantee that that fan base is going to grow yeah. significantly in the next few years because they got they got some dogs there with Stroud and trading for Mixon and trading for Diggs and Nico and Tank and bringing back Schultz like geez the wheeze. Uh, the best team in Texas no longer resides in Dallas. Who Houston. I mean, that, that is a makeover that has happened so quickly. That uh, front office coaching staff, all of them deserve so much credit. Um, mm -hmm. Just just uh, real, real good. Okay, Jaguars, the opposite. The opposite. I mean, if we're going from a team whose front office has just nailed it to a team that uh, has not, I think it's a good segue to Jacksonville and a team that uh, – was the team that we thought was going to be in the position that the Texans are in, honestly, right? Yeah. Like we and, and they just have kind of uh, fumbled the bag. They lost Calvin Ridley this offseason. And there's part of me that thinks that that wasn't 
their plan. They thought that they they were certainly trying to re-sign him and wanted him back. And so that makes me think that wide receiver is probably going to be the pivot if it wasn't already the position that they were going to focus on. Cause I mean, that wide receiver room is, is not ideal. I love Christian Kirk for what he is right. And, and yeah. playing the role that he is, but I don't love him. Uh, I mean, I don't love the room in terms of Zay Jones and Gabe Davis as the guys that you're putting on the field with yeah. him. Not a huge fan of yeah. that. Uh, so I think they could go wide receiver even as early as the first round. I believe they pick 17th overall. Uh, you know, maybe they take Brian Thomas there. Uh, I don't know if there's anybody else that's going to be available that would be worth taking that high at wide receiver, but uh, that's certainly going to be a position of need. Uh, like you, I don't believe in Gabe Davis. Um, uh, I guess maybe he's just – he burned us all, like not last year, but the year before that when he went crazy against Kansas City, we all thought he was going to break out, and then he did not. You know, offensive line, you got to keep in mind that, you know, Cam Robinson and Walker Litter are both slated to be free agents after this season so they could look to the future and grab some linemen. But, I mean, th this is a – to me, like, if Trevor Lawrence does not have a really good year, you're going to start talking about Trevor Lawrence being maybe not a bust, but not meeting expectations of a guy who was supposed to be a generational talent and a no-brainer as the first overall pick uh, just a few years ago. You know, running back, they're fine, you know, with ETN and, and, and Bigsby, but uh, wide receiver and offensive line are probably the two needs there for Jaguars. Yeah, I don't, I mean, I, you're right that that's the conversation that people will have about Trevor Lawrence. It's just so hard for me to go there considering what we're looking at offensively in terms of the pieces around him. I, Evan Ingram is good. ETN is good. The wide receivers have been a mess. I've talked about the usage of Calvin Ridley last year. I didn't like uh, him. I think the you know, play calling and play design could be a lot more creative there. And so it's hard for me to go, Hey, you had urban Meyer in your first year. And clearly that was like, just wipe that from everybody's memory banks. And now we're going to do this with the pieces around you. And then we're going to judge you at the end of that. But that's how mm -hmm. the NFL works. Colts, 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 a lot of defensive picks in the mock drafts. For yeah, them. We're a seeing a lot of edge. We're seeing a lot of cornerback. Uh, what about what about just for fun here? If I'm looking at the positions, uh, groupings offensively here, I don't necessarily, I mean, I, you could upgrade the wide receiver room probably, but like, I don't, I don't dislike the wide receiver room as it stands right now. Clearly mm -hmm. they're invested in Jonathan Taylor. They're fine there. What about Brock Bowers? What about Brock Bowers? Let's take, uh, let's take out. I don't think he's going to be there at 15 though. No, I mean, okay, but maybe they can move. They can move up and down the board, right? Like, I mean, we're, we're doing, like I said, Probably defense here, but you gave me right. an exercise to do here, and that was like what we would like them to do from a fantasy standpoint. Yeah, make no, things better for us. Give, what would be better for me is another, to take this yeah. whole like revolving door at tight end that we can't count on and not do that anymore. Yeah, uh, I, I would love to see that. Uh, realistically, will it happen? Where we we don't know, but you know what. Stranger things have happened in the NFL. I mean, Stephon Diggs just got traded. Uh, <laughs> not that that was a strange thing, but the yeah. fact that he went to Houston, it was like, wow, Houston didn't see that coming. But yeah, you're on it. Defense is going to be the focal point for the Colts. You know, could they add another wide receiver? Like Alec Pierce has not really been great. Josh Downs showed some potential last year. Obviously, they retained Pittman. They need a backup running back too, Linz. I mean, unless they're going to go into the year with Evan Hulls there too. They lost Zach Moss, so they could also go with a backup. And you know backup running back behind a superstar could end up being a fantasy sleeper. You never know, or at least somebody who's going to be a handcuff, a draftable yeah. asset. So uh, running back could be a need uh, for the Colts as well. Uh, I think offensive line also, you know, most teams are, are, are going to need some depth at offensive line uh, at the very least. For the Titans, everyone has Joe Alt going here. I mean, this is like a Joe yeah. Alt all day long, right? I would like them to, I would like to see them at some point in the draft maybe get another wide receiver because clearly like the room is much better right now. Mm -hmm. They've done a lot of work this off season, bringing in Calvin Ridley. That was a, a great move by Rand Carthon, putting him on the field with De uh, DeAndre Hopkins, uh, Traylon Burks. I'm not like, mm, you know, mm. maybe he'll be better as a three than he was when he was forced to be a one. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't, I don't know what to, I don't know what to make of Traylon Burks. And so, you know, maybe that's a position that they could upgrade. There's part of me and I've been told by everyone, I understand this doesn't make any sense. And I, that would not be a hundred percent shocked 
I've literally been told by people who cover the Titans that they would specifically be shocked if this happened. But for some reason, I have it in my head that you know how every year there's a team that makes a surprise move. I kind of feel like the Titans could be a team that is the surprise at quarterback and brings in a quarterback. And I know that they have used draft like a, capital. Like draft draft a, a quarterback at seven? I don't know, but I'm just saying, like, do you are are you convinced that Will Levis is the guy? He's the franchise guy. I uh, know, but I'm pretty convinced that they're going to give him the opportunity to earn that. I agree. I agree. I agree. Yeah. But I'm just saying, like, when you're looking at, like, because you know going into the draft, someone's going to go, whoa, I didn't see that. Like, that's sure. – and, and they seem like a team that could potentially make that that surprise move. Again, I'm just – I'm just talking through how my brain is working, right? I'm I'm not suggesting this is something that they're going to do. I'm just saying, like, if by some weird twist of fate this is what they did, then I think it wouldn't be shocking. I agree with you that they are building a team to get a really good evaluation on Will Levis and that this is going to be the year and that Will Levis is going to be their guy. And everything that they've said has indicated that Will Levis is their guy. They're going to give him a shot. But I also think in a in a draft class like this, where you're sitting in the position that they are in, where they actually have that maneuverability to go get one of these guys. If they think one of these guys is more of a franchise guy than Will Levis, who, you know, kind of fell to them. And then and then, you know, the the Malik thing, I mean, he was the third round. They might as well take a swing in the third round. I think that they're done with Malik. Like they've shown no interest in in further developing him. So Malik yeah. is like off to the side. Put that away. I've been told by people that are like, you can't take a quarterback three years in a row. And I'm like, why not? Why not? It's the only position that matters. Like if you don't have that, if you don't hit on them. And they would know more than the rest of us what Will Levis is and what they think Will Levis can ultimately do. I just, there's a part of me that's like, I mean, if you and I, from a fantasy or real world standpoint, are ranking quarterbacks, where's Will Levis? He's like at the end of our yeah. quarterback rankings. And part of that is a big TBD. And so, you know, that he might have an opportunity this year to go way up. But I also wouldn't be shocked if they were like, you know what, actually, we think that this other guy is not a question mark. We think he's going to be very, very good for the long term. And we're sitting here really high in the draft and maybe we'll make a move to go get him. Uh, again, everyone thinks it's Joe Alt, and that's probably more likely to happen, but just something to put on your radar. I don't know. Yeah, it's good to protect uh, the second-year quarterback. They they added Lloyd uh, Cushenberry uh, in the offseason, and you put Alt in there. Cushenberry? Is that – is it Cushenberry? Isn't that how it's pronounced? Cushenberry? I, I don't know. I, I would have said Cushenberry, but uh, it could be Cushenberry. It Cushenberry? just sounds funny. I don't know. You, you, yeah. Is there a such thing as a Cushenberry? Like There's when when you go sit on your sofa – there's a boysenberry. Is there a cushionberry? Do you when you sit on your sofa, do you like uh, fluff the cushions? That's a, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't I don't know. I'm just saying kush, kush, whatever. Okay. I don't know. That I'll guy. look it up on Google and see. That you guy. know, sometimes, you know, uh, whatever. Uh, anyways, it's it's an offensive lineman. Who cares? Um, but I I and I, I talked to Rode about this too, who's you know the our resident Titans honk. Yep. If alt is gone. Like say say the lightning bolts take them at five, mm -hmm. right? Like again, I you know just just throwing a scenario out there. I don't think they will, but say they take them at five. Do they go after one of the wide receivers? Because I mean, how much more bone? Is, uh, how much more meat is on the uh, the Andre Hopkins bone? I don't know. So we'll see. But uh, bottom line here is that this offense is going to be a lot a lot different than it was last season. I think it'll be a lot of fun to watch because of Brian Callahan's influence. Uh, and it's funny to think about this because the Titans were not super fantasy friendly last year, but I don't see them having like huge needs after what they've done in the off season, bringing in Ridley, bringing in Pollard. Uh, and I, I think they're, 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 they're trending in the direction where they will be much more fantasy friendly uh, this upcoming season. Good job, Rand Carthon. Okay. Now to the defending champs. Let's hit the AFC West and let's start with the Chiefs, who we've been begging for a wide receiver for this room for a long time. They they went out and they got Hollywood Brown to go with Rushy Rice, assuming that Rushy Rice is on the field next year and not dealing with legal fallout from well, that's the thing. Whew. I don't know, Lindsay. From what from like the stuff that I'm hearing and that we're reading, I'd be surprised if Heaney gets suspended. If he didn't because, get suspended. Okay. If he didn't get suspended yeah. because like, I mean, he, now again, I don't know hundred percent because I don't know, again, what, what you read online, you don't know what the truth is, but wasn't he driving the Lamborghini? 
wasn't there what was there marijuana or some like that the, the, there's some bad stuff going on there didn't he flee the these scene guys, these guys i mean hello henry henry rugs like yeah. what the flip yeah guys use your damn heads you're right but i would be surprised if there's not some sort of suspension here yeah for rasheed rice and so they already have hollywood brown I mean, the rest of their wide receivers, I think we've all given up on Sky Moore at this point. Mm. But at 32, is Lad McConkey an option for them potentially? Any of the other wide receivers that I had mentioned a little bit earlier on? You know, could Keon Coleman? They brought back Clyde Edwards Hilaire, so they don't really need a running back, right? I mean, they have Pacheco there. Uh, they could go running back at some point later in the draft with a, with a later round pick. But I think wide receiver from an offensive, and then, you know, you could also look at interior offensive line. Um, Wide receiver is probably the need that I that I see. I think that your point is is good. I, I think. Look, I I have learned to become very cynical about what happens in this league in terms of people who do things and you go, oh, there, yeah, no, they're definitely going to bring down the book on him, and then they don't. So, right. uh, but I do think that you're right, um, especially in light of the Henry Rugg situation, that it's not like that some sort of suspension is probably forthcoming. He was, yeah, he was driving the Lamborghini. I just looked it up. So he was driving one of the cars. But but I also am not sure that if he has a suspension for a certain number of games, which probably isn't going to be an incredibly long suspension, you're not going to you're not going to alter your draft plan to account for that, especially since you already have Hollywood Brown who can effectively take the place of like, okay, we have one one wide wide receiver we could trust. They just won a Super Bowl with one wide receiver that they could trust last year in Rushy Rice. So they could probably get All by right. for a couple of games. With that, uh, I don't know that they alter their draft plan unless their draft plan was already wide receiver, let's upgrade here and bring in, you know, another rookie that we think can actually catch the ball and not drop it. Otherwise, I think maybe protecting protecting Patrick Mahomes on the offensive side of the ball some some o-line help uh pivoting to the chargers i think they need uh and i i will not accept no but yeah but there's no other answer but wide receiver and don't tell me this is how they want to play like you do not enter the nfl and go you know what we don't need we don't need wide receivers just don't need them don't Uh uh-uh not like get out of here get out of here no i can't i can't go get a wide receiver Jim Harbaugh and Greg Roman together in San Francisco la, la, did la, not la, produce la. a number one fantasy wide receiver. You know, they had Bolden, they had Crabtree, they were, you know, wide receiver twos. Wide receivers don't thrive in this offense. And listen, I mean, I would not be surprised, would not be surprised uh, if they ended up going uh, with neighbors. And I think they need to, because I don't think Harrison's going to be there. I think they need or to Rome. do that. Or Rome. I mean, either one, either one of the, yeah. right. Whoever's available. I, I'm, I'm assuming Harrison will be gone uh-huh. uh, go to the Cardinals. I think they, I think they, that that's the biggest need they have on a list. That's really long of needs from a fantasy perspective. Like, think about it. I I'm not in love with Quentin Johnston. I like Josh Palmer, but not as an elite type player. As He's a, a three. three. Yep. In the NFL. Yep. Gus Edwards is is a fine back, but I don't think he's a featured back. Yeah, they could potentially draft Blake Corum in the third round, and no, that would not to. be a surprise because Jim Harbaugh just coached the kid yeah. at Michigan. Yeah, um, yeah, they they added Hayden Hurst, but they could use a tight end because I listen. I mean, Hayden Hurst is you know a journeyman. So they, they brought they in two. Pick- they brought in two tight ends this off season, didn't they? Hayden. Yeah, but I mean, neither one of these guys is like the future. I know, but position for but to me that they're, tells you know, me that they're. I mean, maybe later in the draft, maybe they add a tight end, but this isn't right, like right, a Brock right, Bowers right. So, destination. Babes, they made this offseason knowing that Brock Bowers was somebody that could fall to them. Based like their their moves in free agency kind of make me lean away from that as an option. Wide for receiver, them. running back, offensive line are the big ones. Yeah, I could see them going. Wide I could see them going being tackle. The big one in the you know the lights. I could see them going tackle because everybody talks about Harbaugh and like what he wants to do and. So I, I wouldn't be shocked if they went O-line. And, not, and I also don't think that that's, that's not uh, not smart. I mean, like, please protect Justin Herbert with everything that you have. Like, he must be protected. Um, but I'm going to protect him by handing the ball off a million times and uh, not letting him throw. And, uh, yeah, I, I, Herbert I'm worried about this year. Um, even if they do get, even if they do get, you know, one of these top three wide receivers in the draft, I'm still worried about him. Just offense. Just the, you know, offensive – philosophy is just not conducive to a quarterback putting up like 
massive passing yards. Wide receiver code. The wide receiver do it. Okay. Why are you whispering? Are we? What are we whispering for? Um, I'm just reiterating my point. Uh, All right, I got it. Raiders. Uh, well, um, the Raiders did fill some needs in the off season, right? Running back. I think even though they lost Josh Jacobs, they brought in Alexander Madison. They have Zamir white. So I don't think running back is like a huge, huge need. They, they clearly need a quarterback. Gardner Minshew is not the future. Neither is Aiden O'Connell. I could see them potentially going after a Penix junior or a Bo Nix, uh, at some point in the draft. Uh, they also, don't need a wide receiver from a fantasy standpoint. I think they're fine there, uh, but they could use depth uh, on the offensive line. Uh, they, they've had some losses there in free agency. So that would be what I'm looking at for the Raiders. But I think the Raiders are what they are right now. And I don't think it's going to change significantly with the draft unless they draft one of these quarterbacks and they absolutely just knock Antonio Pierce's boots off in camp uh, and, and take the job. Yeah, I, this was a team that I was thinking might be in a position to move up in the draft and go get one of the top quarterbacks, or at least try to. Um, but once they signed Gardner Minshew to add to their quarterback room, I feel like they already have a backup quarterback in the AOC, right? Like they have a two or somebody like that. And then they went and got Gardner. At, to me, that felt like you're going to get the highest end backup quarterback that was available. And so to me, that screams bridge because you already had AOS, AOC. So I don't, now I'm thinking that they're not going to try to move up for one of those top quarterbacks, that they won't be in the mix to go get them. And that they're more of like maybe even a trade back and take a Penix or a Knicks a little bit later. Um, but okay. I don't know if they do that at 13. That feels pretty, that feels pretty rich for either yeah, of those guys. Yeah, that's, that's, that's high. Um, and then the Broncos, another team that needs like a Every lot. Right? You need a quarterback. What, how, like, where are they going to get a quarterback? Like, what are no, they going to do? Gotta, they got to move up. They got to. They, they got to move up. What are they going to? At twelve, at twelve, the best you're going to get is Penix. That's the best you're going to get at twelve. So, they got to move up, or they're going to kind of be a, a very average or worse team this year. Uh, they Jerry Judy uh, was was traded. I know you love Marvin Mims. They signed Josh Reynolds, but you could still suggest the wide receiver is a need. You know. Is tight end a need? Yeah, I I mean, they, they Greg Dulcich is still, you know, he showed some flashes. You never know, you know, what he could turn into. You know, offensive line, they they could be uh, looking at offensive linemen. But, I mean, the bottom line here is that the Broncos need help on defense. Their defense, I know their defense got better as the season wore on, but their defense was smoked last year. They got up 70 points in a game to the Dolphins. So they're going to be focusing a lot on the defensive side of the football. So I could see they their got top receiver from that season being – Sutton, Mims, Rhodes, Reynolds. And and their the, the backfield, I think, is set with Javante, uh, P. Ryan, and, and McLaughlin. But they, I mean, right now, their quarterback is Jared Stidham. And if, um, that's not going to elicit a lot of excitement in fantasy. If they somehow make moves in the draft to make us feel like, hey, this roster is actually looking pretty good uh, by the end of the draft, then we need to like give awards out because that it's going to really? require so much maneuvering with the picks. I know because they, they, they only have one pick in the top 75, yeah, which is their first round pick at 12. And then they've got a three, a four, a five, a five, a five, a six, and a six. So yeah. like their draft capital kind of stinks. Yeah, according so to Tankathon's to uh, if, draft if, power rankings, they have the 19th best draft capital with which to work. If, if for this season, just this season, right? Yeah. Okay. So they well because you could look ahead to like you know what you know for if the Broncos want to move up, are they going to have to trade that one and then next year's one? You know that kind of thing. Like probably. So bottom line though is that they are kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place and they're still paying Russell Wilson a S ton of money to not play for them. Yeah. So Broncos, I mean, they're, they're kind of in rebuilding mode and I don't know how good this team's going to be. They're going to have to make some magic. And if you look at Lindsay, their history, aside from bringing in Peyton Manning, which is like, I mean, it's Peyton freaking Manning. There's no, no question about that. They have sucked. 
at bringing in quarterbacks. Sucked. Well, yeah. Russell's was bad. They brought in Paxton Lynch. He was lousy. You know, Tim Tebow was lousy. I, I don't know why he got picked in the first round. Regardless, but like the Broncos have had a history under Elway of not really getting the job done when it comes to bringing in quarterbacks. But he's not. He's not so, doing that anymore. He's not. It, not there yet. is no I, under I, I, Elway right I'm now in it. that regard. It's, since Elway, since Elway is what I'm saying. Yeah. The, the, I, I just, I feel like, and I know, I know, I know that you enjoy those kinds of trends. I just think that there is no, they in, in regard, like the name on the front, you know, the name on the back, like the, like the actual Broncos name hasn't drafted well, like all the people are different. So I don't really put too much stock in that. Quarterback. Yeah. I mean, I I, I get it, but I'm just saying like, again, there's different people in the front office now. So every time you fire somebody and you put somebody else in there, you can't, um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's the water. Like they, they you know, they, they that's move to a certain it. area and then the water, it affects their brain and their decisions to make quarterback, uh, you know, choices in the draft or Water's in free agency. good in Denver. Right. But not New York, probably not in New York though. Okay. Well, Fabs, that's the AFC that we have gone through. So on Thursday, we'll go through the NFC teams, find various oh, draft teams. go through and crap on my Cowboys. That's going to be fun. Can we just skip them? Just Why? Kidding. The Cowboys move the needle more than any team in sports. What are you talking about? Okay. All right. Did you hear CeeDee Lamb might hold out? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good job, Jerry Jones. All right, Jackass. Fabs. All right, Fabs. Save it for Thursday. In the meantime, thank you so much for listening to the Believe Fantasy Football Show presented by Bet Online. Quick reminder if you enjoyed the show, would like to hear future episodes, please hit that subscribe button, like, leave a comment, and we'll be back on Thursday with the NFC. 